everyone and welcome back to my channel. We are in those very delicate, some might call them awkward, few days after Christmas but before New Year's and for me this year those days were really days to get ahead because I had spent a good portion of December just figuring things out, feeling behind and just not being as organized or as caught up as I would really like to be. So I made it a point to really take these few days before New Year's Eve to organize my life. And for me, that meant embracing more of a minimalist approach to my daily schedule. I had been researching minimalism for at least the whole year. I'm always looking at it, but I've never actually been able to do it. So I finally sat down, went through my needs in life, my questions and the things that I wanted to improve on and I finally made a breakdown of the five easy steps that I could take to make minimalism manageable. So the first thing I needed was opening up my space, changing the, the feng shui of my room a little bit. Um, I notice when there's more light in the room and there's more open areas, clean surfaces, I can think clearer, I can breathe easily, um, I feel like my thoughts are just less cluttered when my space is less cluttered. So that's the first thing I did was I, I moved my bed, I got rid of all the pillows that I didn't need, I made my bed, which is something I don't normally do. And you know, it really makes you feel good. A lot of my friends um, have always encouraged like, oh, if you make your bed, like, it's really a good start to the day. And I make a note to do it, but I never actually do. So today I made a point to bust out the duvet, make my bed, and just put my pillows away so that when I'm not sleeping, I don't feel like my bed is a place for sleep. Now I can work here on my bed, now I can film here, I can sit down and write in my ledger, create my schedule. The bed has changed from just a place of sleep or stagnancy to a place of productivity. And that was the first step for me. Now with point number two, I was a little bit intimidated. I honestly did not know where to start. Every time I try to start my minimalism journey, I start in the closet. And so what I did this time was, since that has never worked for me in the past, I decided to start in a different direction. I started as though I was packing for a trip. If I'm packing for a trip, what would I need for a week. What are the things that I need every single day that are necessities, my daily necessities? I know at almost every day I'm gonna do my hair because I don't really like my hair fresh out of the shower, so I started there. Not makeup, because makeup's a little too crazy, but I knew exactly what I needed to have my hair done the way I like it, and everything that did not have to do with doing my hair the way I like it on a daily basis, gone got rid of it. So I found a place to put all these daily necessities in an accessible, organized format. And I feel like having accomplished that and having accomplished step one, I felt really good. I felt like this, this task is doable. We can, we can tackle this giant minimalist project. So with those accomplished, I moved on to step three my non-daily necessities. And for me, this is camera equipment, duplicates, chargers, techie stuff. I must organize all the things that I don't use every day, but still cannot get rid of. And for me, I have a special shoe box of just all the tech stuff that I don't wanna deal with, I don't wanna look at, and I don't want to be hassled with. I don't wanna be bothered with it. So I busted out the shoebox and I looked in it, I laid everything out, and it was honestly absurd. I had camera equipment, audio equipment, GoPro equipment, which is its own separate genre of stuff. I had chargers, USB cables, battery packs. I had all kinds of stuff in there. Mace, old phones and broken phones that I was afraid to throw away. Just ridiculous stuff, all kinds of stuff that I do not need. So that was step three, was if I can tackle this shoebox of techie stuff, we'll be one big giant step closer 
to just feeling a little bit lighter, feeling less weighed down by to-dos and clutter. So luckily for me, I was able to organize all those things in a small travel bag, which matches the travel bag that I use for my hair stuff. So now I have two out of three travel bags full of things that I need that are now completely organized. <sighs> Felt great. Honestly, that tech box had not been organized or even looked at in years. And I've just been moving it from apartment to apartment to apartment. And to know that everything I need and everything that I may need in the future is all in one tiny compact case just felt great. So with this momentum that I had going, I really started to realize that, okay, if I keep doing a little bit every day, I could be a minimalist. I come from a family of hoarders. Everybody I know, mom, dad, aunts, grandparents, they all have way more things than they need. And I just grew up thinking that's normal, like you have to save certain things, certain things you shouldn't throw away. And having watched a lot of my um, inspirations on YouTube, Matt Diabella is one of them, I realized I don't, I don't think I want that for myself. And so every time I accomplish one of the steps, I feel a little bit better and I feel more encouraged and I feel just empowered to continue on and not rush myself. I think that's one of the most important things you should do is do not rush yourself and do not pressure yourself to do it all in one day because that's exactly how you have a breakdown and that's exactly how you quit. And that's what I've done every year up until this point is I've gotten overwhelmed and I've quit and that's what we're trying to avoid here. Which brings me to step four. And for me, step four is absolutely crucial in the longevity of your minimalism journey. I have learned it's very important to tackle all of your daunting tasks one at a time. So like I mentioned earlier, for me, it's my closet. My closet has always been just intimidating, daunting. There's clothes in there that used to be my mother's when she was my age. There's valuable clothes, brand name things that I'm saving but I never wear so for me the closet's gonna take a few purges I've done three purges this year which has eliminated over half of my clothes over half so I've done one more purge put everything in a in a duffel bag which will be given away and even after getting rid of an entire duffel bag of clothes I still want to get rid of more so that's a good thing because at least I'm, I'm encouraged, I'm feeling good about it, and I'm seeing even with this small amount of clothes, which is probably one third of what I had when I moved into this apartment, I'm still seeing things that I don't need, that I don't want, that don't bring me joy. And that's the point is, you know, you're not supposed to be getting rid of stuff that you love, that it's difficult to get rid of. You're supposed to be getting rid of things so that you feel better. And if it doesn't make you feel better to get rid of it, just wait. Just wait till next time. After my closet will be my shoes. Shoes are a big one because I just, I love shoes. I love buying them. I love looking at them. I love how my feet look in them, especially high heels. But the fact of the matter is I do not wear them. I am, I'm pregnant now, so I'm definitely not wearing any high heels. So wrapping up step four, make sure the intimidating tasks, the daunting tasks, whatever your pinnacle of clutter is, Take it easy on yourself. Don't tackle it all in one day. Don't force yourself. And understand that it's gonna take a couple of purges before you can really get to a place where you consider ideal. And my final step to make minimalism a manageable thing is to monitor your future purchases. Because yes, it feels great to do all of this minimizing. It feels great to eliminate. It feels wonderful to reduce and clean and declutter. But if you just go out and go shopping again, you're gonna have to do all the hard stuff again. And as wonderful as it is to go shopping, it does not compare to the heaviness and the discomfort that comes along with having a mountain of built up clutter, for me at least. I never got that much of a rise out of shopping before, so I try to get pleasure from buying simple things like, let's say, candles, 
chapstick, cleaning supplies, things that I know that I will need instead of buying them in bulk. I'll save them so I can buy them once a month and still get that satisfaction, still get the feeling that I'm shopping for things even though I'm not shopping for necessarily material things. So those are my five tips for making minimalism manageable. Um, I hope they helped you as much as they've helped me and I hope we can continue to keep things simple, keep things clean and keep our lives and minds clutter free. So please subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Much love, everyone. Hopefully I'll see you again before the end of this year, and if not, I will definitely, definitely be seeing you next year.